I'd been at school for approximately three years. The school itself was at the foot of the Malvern Hills in Worcestershire. And over the Malvern Hills, there was always this mist. And I went into school this one morning, and my teacher said to me, are you okay today, Steve? I said, funnily enough, I'm not, I've got a real bad headache. She said, you look really pale. She said, how long get a bad head for then? I said, I don't know, about two or three days. I said, I think it might be something to do with the weather. She said, the weather? Why the weather? I said, well, all I can see today is like this heavy mist coming down, like the start of fog. She said, well, that's a little bit worrying, especially today, because it's a nice bright day outside with high cloud and the sun shines out. So she took my hand and walked me up to surgery. My mum and dad were called into school. We were all rushed off to Birmingham Eye Hospital, and 16 weeks later, I was totally blind. And people say to me, how do you cope with something like that, Steve? But well, at the age of 12, you don't. How did my mum and dad and brothers and sisters cope with it? They didn't. I used to lie in bed at night, cry myself to sleep, thinking, why me, God? What have I done to deserve this? I was lonely. I was frightened. I was confused. But the biggest thing that's going through my mind was, will people still love me how they used to love me when I could see? So I went back to school to Voices Without Faces, and that's been my life for the past 44 years. So I wasn't the captain of the school football team anymore, or the cricket team, and I definitely didn't need the best seat in front of the TV after school. So to share with you lovely people this evening that that was the toughest two years of my life would be a bit of an understatement. But the perception of the world in which we live, really, something like that happening to somebody at that time in their life should have been the end of their life. But I actually tell everybody, it wasn't the end of my life. It was actually the start of my life. And that transition happened to me one Christmas morning while sat playing my Christmas presents, the phone rang. My mum said, Steve, your Uncle Graham's on the phone. I said, what does he want? She said, I don't know, but you better come and speak to him. So he said to me, what are you doing in the morning? I said, playing my Christmas presents, probably. Why? He said, would you like to go and see Villa Train? I said, I'd love to. He said, right, I'll come and get you at half nine. So I come off the phone and my mum said, what does he want then? I said, he wants to take me off to see Villa Train in the morning. She said, that's interesting. I said, what is? She said, do you remember that article that I read to you out of the newspaper this week about Villa signing a goalkeeper from Blackpool called John Burridge? I said, yes. She said, well, your Uncle Graham is a Blackpool supporter. The only he wants to take you up there is so he can meet one of his old players. <laughs> But as he said he would, he came and picked me up and we went off to train and I stood behind this goal that John Burridge, our new goalkeeper, was in and I could hear the ball bounce off the crossbar, off the post, off the goalkeeper. Nothing's changed in 40 odd years. No, <laughs> no, no wonder we were in the championship last year. But after training, John came over to me and he said, so Steve, why is it you're not playing football anymore? I said, it's obvious why I'm not playing football anymore. I can't see. He said, you don't need to be able to see to play football and we need to do something about it. So one day after training, he came and picked me up from home and he took me into our local sports shop and he bought me a plastic football. He took the valve out of this plastic football so it went flat. He then put some rice and peas and ball bearings and little stones inside this ball. He put the valve back in and he blew it up. So now I got a ball that was audible. It sounded a bit like a baby's rattle. But <clears throat> the problem I had was I hadn't kicked a ball for two years, and if I'm being honest with you, I never thought I was going to kick a ball again. So to start with, John used to hold my hand, and he'd run across the pitch with me, and then he'd run back across the pitch, and then he'd go and stand 10 yards away, 20 yards away, 30 yards away from me, until I got a confidence that I could run freely and I wasn't going to come to any danger. So now I'm actually doing something I never thought I would do again, and that was playing football. But that ball really was like the umbilical cord back into life for me. That ball became my best friend. It gave me mobility, independence, and bags and bags of self-belief. To the degree that the year after that, I went to set a 100 metres world record for a junior in a time of 12.2 seconds. So you could see the change, the development, and the improvement that was now happening in my life. 